Hey, how you doing? Thanks for joining me. In this video, what we're going to take a look at today is sizing a pull box, but specifically we're going to take a look at sizing the angle pull mentioned in 123036. In a previous video, we took a look at 123036 and sized a pull box with the U-pull. Uh, this one again, we're going to take a look at the angle pull. What that is, is where you have a conduit entering and a conductor exits on the adjacent wall. Um, so there's some specific rules that apply to that. It's exactly the same rule that we looked at before, just a slightly different application when we're dealing with the angle pull. Okay, so first thing I want to mention, I want to bring up again, 123036 only deals with conductors that are smaller than a number 4 gauge. Um, so we're not going to worry about these conductors right here. Um, those would be dealt with in 123034 for sizing uh, boxes. Totally different, different video for that one. Okay, for this one, we are going to worry about these two other sets of conductors here that are larger than a number 4. Those we're going to take into account when we look at 123036. We're not going to use specific sizes of conductors here. What we could do is actually size our farthest conduit there on this wall. But to do that, we'd have to actually take into account the fact that there's multiple conductors inside a conduit or multiple sizes of conductors in that conduit. And again, we could use section 12 to size that, but there's a specific method to that and we'll deal with that in a separate video. We'll do some conduit sizing in a separate video. For this one, I just want to focus on the box. So we'll keep it simple. We'll figure out what the minimum dimensions of this pull box are. So uh, the first dimension that we're going to focus on, if we look at 123036, we have all of our conduits here listed. We have our 41, 21, 35 trade size conduit. And then on this adjacent wall, we have our 21 trade size conduit and our 53 trade size conduit um, is the furthest there. Okay, so we're going to focus on 123036, sub rule 2, item C, item I first, which tells me um, what I want to do essentially is if I look at this wall right here, we're going to look at this wall first, okay? The raceways that enter this wall, we want to make sure that we observe the proper bend radius for the conductors that exit those conduits. In order to do that, we need to figure out what is the minimum dimension to the opposite wall um, for where those raceways enter, okay? So to do that, if we read in 123036, what it tells me we're going to do, we're going to take six times the largest trade size diameter. Okay, which in this case we have our 41 times 6 gives us 246 millimeters. Then what we're going to do is add to that the rest of the diameters from our other raceways on this wall. Okay, so we have our 21 and our 35 trade size on there as well. If we add those on to the 246, we end up with a total of 302 millimeters. That's the minimum distance for this right here to observe that we have the proper distance to the opposite wall there. Okay, so that's one dimension. We also have to take a look at the other dimension of the box as well. Um, so in this case, if we take a look at the opposite, what we're looking at now, where these conductors enter, so this wall right here, what is the minimum distance to the opposite wall down there? That's what we're going to take a look at next. We apply the exact same rule. It's just now we have our 21 trade size and our 53 trade size conduit that we're using in our calculation. So again, same thing, we're going to use six times the largest trade size diameter, right, which in this case is actually 53. 53 times six gives us 318, plus that other 21 trade size conduit on there gives us a total on this now of 339, okay? When we're selecting our pull box, we have, if we were going with a square, um, for example, this box would have to be a minimum 339 by 339 to keep 123036 in order to follow 123036 properly. If we weren't going with a square, we could just say that the minimum dimensions, our minimum dimension there would be 339, and the minimum dimension here would be 302, okay? So there are two other dimensions that we have to take into account when we are doing a pull box like this, especially an angle pull. Uh, we have to take into account 123036, sub rule two item CII, which actually tells me what the minimum distance is between two conduits that contain, sorry, contain the same conductor. So in this case, these two conduits right here, we have this one and where it enters over here, we need to figure out what the minimum distance is between those two on the innermost points, okay? If we take a look, 123036, sub rule two item CII, it tells me all we're gonna do is take six times the trade size diameter of the largest raceway containing those um, conductors. So in this case, they are coming from our 35 trade size conduit and they go to our 53 trade size conduit. In this case, we would take the 53 trade size conduit as it's the larger, multiply it by six and we get that 318 millimeters. That's the minimum distance between those two conduits. And if we look at the next conduit as well, same thing. The minimum distance between those two points would again be 
uh, six times the largest diameter of the raceway containing those two cables. So again, it would be the exact same. We would take that 53 trade size conduit. We have 53 and 41 that we're comparing. 53 trade size conduit times six gives us again the 318 millimeter distance minimum between those from the inside edges. Okay, hopefully this has helped. Thanks for joining me.